Xinjiang is located deep in the interior of the country, surrounded by tall mountain ranges and blessed with a magical landscape containing a rich variety of flora and fauna. 47 nationalities are represented among the 23 million people living in this ancient site of civilization. Using their courage and wisdom, they have built an excellent living environment. Several major mountain ranges in Asia intersect in the Pamirs in the western end of the country. Their average height is over 5,000 meters and they are known as the roof of Asia. Kyrgyz herdsmen have lived here for many generations. It's early July. Buru Mahan and her family prepare to move to their next pasture. During the winter, they live in the river valley at an altitude of 3,000 meters. The ice and snow on the mountain pastures gradually melts as the weather warms. They then move up to the summer pasture, over 4,000 meters in altitude, at the mountain pass of Donggulama. People in Xinjiang still follow this ancient nomadic lifestyle. During the six months of winter, they must move to higher altitude pastures to graze their animals. Improved roads mean that it only takes half a day now for a journey that used to take two to three days. Seventy-one-year-old Buru Mahan regularly paces between homes and along the national border. She has been on volunteer duty guarding the border since the 1960s. She patrols this route, displaying her tough physical and mental outlook forged by the Pamirs. Even in July and August, the evening temperature can drop below freezing in Donggu Lama Pass. In addition to being portable, yurts are warm in winter and cool in summer. Buru Mahan has been helping the soldiers patrol the border since childhood. Atavus to yeni bir su. Bir alatı uşağı yiyiz. 
Karol, bildiğin adamımız bildiğin pozitif karayımız değil mi? Burmahan has lost count of how many marks she has left on the stones over the decades. She considers the stones to be her spiritual sisters. Jungo, Jungo, many my dragon day. There are many like Burmahan from various ethnic groups helping to guard the country's border in Xinjiang. The local government has introduced policies to improve living conditions for more than 100,000 nomadic households over the last five years. These improvements have brought them a more comfortable and prosperous lifestyle, as well as happiness and dignity. These steep hills are called Yadan landforms. But there is a danger lurking behind their beauty. Lapnor has taken many lives as it changed from a vast lake to a dry and lifeless area. O yaşlı sen bu şey, 60 doktorun olsan, 70, şöyle 72 yıldır ekir kendime ekir kendime ekir. Hep de yokuz, atam ben yokuz kuydum bu şey, yokuz işe böyle azırak. Senin şirket, senin şirketi ki o yedi, ben kirpah bunu takıtıp. His father helped Bekri learn all about Lopnor's geography. Bekri Aharti is 46 and lives in Dikan Township, north of Lapnor. He makes a living by growing grapes and operating a small store. He now also works as a guide in Lapnor, adding to his family's income. Lapnor is not a good thing. It's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. The sandstorms. Dry conditions and huge temperature fluctuations often render GPS useless. Many people die of thirst not far from water. The ancient city was long ago buried in the sand, but people still fantasize about the ancient Silk Road. Bekri is leading a caravan from the mainland across Lop Noor. Thanks to Bekri's guidance, the adventurers gradually forget their initial fear, but their journey is getting more and more difficult. <laughs> B 
that Cree is able to navigate this dangerous area without relying on any modern navigation tools. For the explorers, this is the mysterious and secretive Lolan. But for Bakri, this is the home of his forefathers. His frequent contact with tourists has greatly increased his interest in the outside world. But there are always initial problems to overcome. In the end, he decides to find a guide. Rapid economic development in Xinjiang has led to changes in the attitude of the locals toward life as a result of significant improvement in their standards of living. Over a century ago, Bekri's grandfather acted as a guide for Swedish explorer Sven Hedin. They went into the wilderness of Lapnor, looking for the famous 60 Springs. Roads are essential in order to change deserts into oases and bring prosperity to the poor in Xinjiang. A comprehensive system of roads has begun to take in shape and Xinjiang is becoming a hub connecting China to Central Asia, West Asia, South Asia, and Europe. The biggest challenge to building roads in the area is the Taklamakan Desert. In 1995, the first desert highway in Xinjiang, the Taklamakan Desert Highway, was completed. It is the longest such desert highway in the world. It is 566 kilometers long and connects northern and southern Xinjiang, which are separated by the desert. Vegetation is planted along the sides of the road to protect the road bed. The plants are watered through an underground system that is manually operated daily. The water must drip on the roots of the plants for at least six hours a day in the summer. Irrigation operators, usually couples, are stationed at well stations throughout the vast desert, often known as couples wells. These couples help ensure the security of the highway. 
as it snakes through the vast desert like a black dragon. For some people, the desert is not such a terrifying and desolate place. Sand therapy is a traditional Uyghur medical therapy. Hot sand is used to expel internal chills and dampness. On a typical July evening in the Kumtaga Desert, the temperature hovers around 40 degrees Celsius, and the surface of the sand can reach 70 degrees Celsius. Sand therapy is not a pleasant experience. Patients sweat profusely and need to constantly drink water. The Kumtag Desert is distinguished by its beauty as well as its definite boundary, defined by a small river that has flowed for millennia. One side is lush and green vegetation, and the other drifting yellow sand. The river is too small to block the vast desert or nourish the nearby county. It can only quietly flow through two extreme natural environments, forming a bridge between man and nature. All the ethnic groups in Xinjiang are becoming more aware of the importance of ecological protection. More and more people are working to improve environmental and ecological protection. Xinjiang has established 42 natural forest, wildlife, wetlands, and desert ecosystem reserves. The reserves are home to over 4,000 wild plants and 700 wild animals effectively protecting the biodiversity of the local flora and fauna. I first came here when I was 34 years old. I still remember very clearly. My father told me that this place is called Sand Dao Hai. It's not only a tree, but it's also the area of the Qing He region, the whole Qing He and the Qing He region. 也是我们保护区最重要的水源,布尔根河的发源地. Before graduating from college, Chu Wenwen was already following her father's path by wandering across the entire Altai region to protect wild animals. The area is home to a rare kind of wild animal, the Xinjiang Mongolian beaver. This Xinjiang 
大概有一个五百到六百只的样子，真的是比大熊猫还要少。Beavers have survived for two million years. For more than 20 years now, Chu Wen Wen's father has been trying in vain to help the beaver families thrive. Every year, many young adult beavers are evicted by their parents. They face many dangers looking for a new home, including attacks from other beavers. 它是一只亚成体，十七公斤。当时救护回来的时候，浑身啊都是口子，有四十多处撕裂伤，感染非常严重，化脓。所以救护回来当天就已经死掉了。乌龙谷河流域，那么猛禽河流唯一的这个分布栖息区，亚成体的河狸，它能生存的环境的容纳量是基本没有的。如果这个没有亚成体，那么年轻的河狸，我们种群数量没法恢复。昨天晚上呀，陈刚叔接到了个护林员电话，说最近发洪水，有一只河狸可能跑到了农用渠里边。他一直跟，你先要跟。那他还没去跟。你先要跟。不热不热。哎，爹，你说这么长的渠，咱们从哪儿找它呀？渠很长，我们就往沿着渠走啊。也许可能有那个闸门，它就是。从底下捞点泥垫吧垫。不是那个，就是人家堵闸门的时候堵水的时候。你看，这个这个堤坝，它是水泥的，所以河狸没有着力点，它一爪子扒也扒不住，上都不好上来。我们这边原来救助过的情况，就有他们顺着这个这个这个渠里面的水走了好多公里那种。可能在别人看来，他们觉得哎呀，这个东西就是个大老鼠嘛。但是在我看来，我真的觉得，它是我这辈子见过最美好的东西了。The population of beavers in the reserve is now close to the limit. Making it hard for young adult beavers to start their own families. So they work very hard, work very hard. There is a large part of them that is being eaten. So this number has not gone up. I am very worried that we have not found the beaver. Will it have passed by other beaver areas? There is a fight like we saw yesterday with the beaver. I hope that we can find the beaver to save the beaver. Let's see what the beaver is doing. 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 这里是我们保护区的一个制高点。我回来之后呢，经常会来这儿。有时候是我自己，有时候和我爹一起。有时候经常能看到河狸，但他们看不到我。我觉得对待野生动物就应该这样，远远的看着他们过得好，这就够了。